Hi everyone and welcome to our session today on Frontline Worker Device Management in Microsoft Intune. My name is Jessica Yang and I'm a Senior Product Manager on the Android and MDM team. Hi everyone, I'm Shavlin DeMello. I'm a Product Manager on the Intune mobile application, aka the MAM team. Hello everyone, I'm Matt Yandek and I'm a Principal Engineer and Architect in the Intune mobility space. We are so excited today to give you an overview of a bunch of great new features that Intune has introduced recently that are going to help you manage your frontline worker devices even better. We have a tour of all of these things that you see on the screen, and they're going to make your enrollment, maintenance, and user experiences even easier across platforms so that we can support the devices that your frontline workers need. First off, starting with some updates to capabilities on the Android platform. Intune today supports the full set of Android devices, including a range of specialized devices that run on Android Open Source Project, or AOSP. We support a growing range of AOSP devices, including these that you see on the screen right now, where you can manage device configuration, compliance, certificate, network profiles, and more. And now our latest update on AOSP management is the ability to deploy mandatory line of business apps to these devices. So let's take a look at how this is going to work on a MetaQuest 2 device, which you can now manage with Intune through our partnership with MetaQuest for Business. Here I have myself creating a new LLB app in Intune. So I'm going to select the APK file for the app that I want to deploy. And then I can enter some details about the app, such as the name, the publisher, and the targeted platform. In this case, the platform is going to be Android AOSP, which is what these devices run on. After uploading the app to Intune, I can then deploy it as a required install to the headsets that I want to see the app on. And now let's switch over to the headset and see how that app deployment is going to work. So here I have a MetaQuest 2 device that I have enrolled with Intune using our integration with the Meta IT Admin Portal. I'm going to just skip through enrollment to get to the home environment of the Quest 2. And now I'm here and in the background, the Intune agent is already installing the line of business apps that I just deployed. I can see them on the device right here listed under Company Managed Apps. And as a reminder, I'm showing this demo on a Quest, but any of the devices mentioned that are managed with Intune for AOSP are going to be able to support deployment of mandatory LLB apps as well. And now I'm going to hand it over to Matt, who is going to tell you about device staging. Thanks, Jess. Next up, we have device staging, a new solution that simplifies device enrollment for frontline workers on Android Enterprise corporate-owned work profile and fully managed device types. With staged enrollment, admins can enroll devices on behalf of users, making the onboarding process much simpler for the user when they unbox the device. By streamlining the enrollment process and mitigating inconsistent device behavior, device staging also reduces the number of help desk calls. Up to 10 to 15 fewer steps that you need to document and train users on. Let's take a look at how it works. For those of you already familiar with setting up enrollment profiles for Android Enterprise, the process for configuring staged enrollment should be familiar. In the Create Profile flow, you'll see a new drop-down selection that will allow you to choose staged enrollment. Once you have the profile in the token or QR code, it can then be shared with others, like another admin or a kitting vendor, to allow them to prep devices prior to sending to your end users. When your end user unboxes the device, getting it ready is now much simpler and streamlined experience. All the user must do is open the Intune app that is already installed on the device, enter the credentials when prompted, follow a few on-screen registration steps, and then the device is ready for use. This will save your end users a ton of time and ultimately reduce support tickets. We're really excited to get this in your hands. Next up, we have shared device mode. Shared device mode gives you a multi-user experience, which is wrapped in a single sign-in, sign-out experience. App developers can integrate with a publicly available SDK to enable a more seamless multi-user experience in their apps. Shared device mode is available on both iOS and Android. 
As you can see, there are already quite a few apps that support shared device mode, and the list of apps is constantly growing. Great productivity apps such as Teams, Outlook, Edge, and other great Microsoft apps have all integrated with shared device mode. Something that works great with shared device mode is the Manage Home Screen app for Android. If you're not familiar with Manage Home Screen, it is our enterprise launcher app for Android Enterprise dedicated devices. Managed Home Screen offers the ability to customize and control the end user experience on an enrolled device. It also has built-in integration with shared device mode, which provides a great single sign-in, sign-out for multi-user shared devices. We've worked with customers gathering a ton of great feedback to improve core user flows to improve usability and supportability. I want to take a few moments to share those improvements with you now. First, Manage Home Screen has added a new customizable top bar. There you can display username, tenant name, as well as have quick access to settings and the sign out button. We've also made significant improvements to the permission granting flow in Manage Home Screen to ensure that essential permissions are never missed by device users. Users see a dialog upon launch, and if they reject the permission, a toast appears with a red dot on the settings app icon. Tapping either of those takes users to the settings screen where they can grant the necessary permissions to unlock full functionality of their productivity apps. We've also made a few updates to the settings screen as well as a new troubleshooting menu that's accessible to frontline workers. Users can easily upload logs from the get help page and launch management adjacent apps as needed from the management resources section. Users now have all the tools they need to help troubleshoot device issues and access important information about managed home screen. Let's take a quick look at some of the improved experiences using shared device mode and managed home screen now. Let's dig into the admin experience for configuring managed home screen for shared device mode. First, we're going to create a new device restrictions profile for Android enterprise devices. And then we're gonna give it a name, we'll call it retail devices. And finally, we'll specify that this is a profile for dedicated devices that uses multi-app kiosk, which of course utilizes our Manage Home Screen app. From there, we'll add the apps that our associates need, such as Teams for Communication, SharePoint for Document Access, and the Inventory Tracker app. We're also going to enable some managed settings, which will allow the admin to configure the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth settings, as well as device information and troubleshooting tools, and finally, we're also enabling exit kiosk mode, which allows us to escape the managed home screen back to the OEM launcher in case we need to do any further troubleshooting steps on the device. Now, let's take a look at the device experience for a frontline worker on an Android Enterprise device with shared device mode. Here, we have a Zebra TC52 device that's enrolled with Intune using the QR code. Katie, our frontline worker, picks up the device and is presented with a logon screen at the beginning of her shift. Katie enters her email, her password, and finally a session pin, and is then logged into the device. She then lands on the Manage Home screen where she has access to Teams, SharePoint, and the inventory app we configured in the previous demo. Katie can access her managed settings to adjust Bluetooth and Wi-Fi settings. She can also launch Teams, and she's already logged in, so she's ready to collaborate with her coworkers. When she opens SharePoint, she can access the documents that are relevant for her role. Notice she does not need to enter her password since single sign-on is enabled. And finally, once she's done with her shift, she can log out and the device is put back on the same landing page in Manage Home Screen, ready for the next employee's shift. All of Katie's data is cleared from the device, so there's no risk of data leakage or privacy concerns when the next person uses the device. Now I'm going to toss it back to Jess, who's going to talk about OS updates. Thanks, Matt. Now, we know how important it is for you to keep your devices updated and secure, which is why we have recently partnered with Zebra to add integration with Zebra's LifeGuard over the air service, which lets you deliver updates and patches to Zebra devices directly from the Intune console. On Samsung devices, you can also perform firmware updates remotely using the Knox ePhoto console, which integrates with your existing Intune tenant. Let's take a look at what this looks like on Zebra devices. With Intune's integration with Zebra's LifeGuard over-the-air service, I can now connect my Zebra account and my Intune tenant to create new firmware update deployments to my Zebra devices. 
So here I'm creating a new deployment, giving it a name and description. And now you can see here that I can choose the model I want to update. I can select a schedule for these updates. And I can also specify different conditions for the update, such as a battery level, charging status, or network connectivity. This way, I can ensure that the updates don't disrupt operations or compromise security, and my devices are always up to date on the firmware version that I want them to be on. Lastly, I'm really excited to share that Remote Help, which we first announced on Windows, is now generally available on Android Enterprise dedicated devices from both Samsung and Zebra. Remote Help on Android supports attended screen sharing, attended control, as well as fully unattended control for devices that don't have a user in front of them. Just like Remote Help on Windows, you get session history reporting, role-based access controls, and Azure AD back proof of helper identity, ensuring that only the right people can perform troubleshooting remotely on devices. Let's move into a demo of what you can do with remote help for Android. Let's say that I manage a store and one of our associates is reporting that their device isn't connecting to a Bluetooth printer. I can go into the admin console and start a new remote assistance session. Here I'm going to choose unattended control, which means that I don't need the user to accept the session on the device. It's just automatically going to begin. Now here I see the device screen on my console, again using our Manage Home Screen Enterprise Launcher. And I'm going to open up the Manage Settings app and check the Bluetooth status. I can see here that somebody has turned it off, so I'm just going to fix it by turning that back on. And now my device is going to be able to connect to my printer without any problem. Using remote help, I was able to quickly resolve the issue on the device from a completely different location without requiring any end user present in front of the device at all. And now, Chevlin is going to tell you about our newest feature, Working Time. Thanks, Jess. Next, we will talk about the new Working Time capability. Many customers, especially those with shift workers, have expressed interest in a solution that blocks a shift worker from accessing work apps, as well as the capability to mute notifications from work apps when the shift worker is either clocked out or off shift. This capability can benefit both the organization and their employees by enabling organizations to reduce company liability, as well as protect the employee's well-being with the ability to disconnect from work outside of their shift. Next, let's look at the feature overview. As mentioned earlier, working time settings enable organization admins to enforce policies that limit and or mute notifications received during non-working time. Currently, this feature is only available on Microsoft Teams, on Android under private preview. The limit access capability uses a setting within app protection policies that allows admins to block access during non-working time. While the mute notifications capability allows admins to create a non-working time policy to mute notifications from the app during non-working time. Please note that both of these capabilities require that the organization integrate with Microsoft's Working Time API in order to share the shift worker status for the employee. Next, we will look at the flow for creating these policies, starting with the setting for limiting access. Once the admin is logged into Microsoft's Intune Admin Center, they would need to navigate to the Apps section as seen in Step 1, and then select App Protection Policies as seen in Step 2. They would then click Create Policy, as seen in Step 3, and select Android, as seen in Step 4. Once they are in the Conditional Launch section of the Create App Protection Policy flow, the admin would then need to select Non-Working Time under the App Conditions, as seen in Step 1, and then either select the Block Access or One Action, as seen in Step 2. Block Access will block the end user's access to the app when they are clocked out or off shift while WARN will display a warning message to the end users stating that their organization recommends that they do not access work apps during off shift. In case of WARN, unlike block access, end users have the ability to dismiss the warning and continue using the app. 
Here is an example of what the block access experience would look like for the end user. Next, moving on to creating a non-working time policy to mute notifications. Once the admin is logged into Microsoft's Intune Admin Center, they would need to navigate to the app section as seen in step one, and then select quiet time as seen in step two. They would then need to click policies tab as seen in step three, and select create policy as seen in step four. This will then open up the create policy flow as seen to the right side of the screen. Within that flow, the admin would select non-working time as the policy type in step five, and then click create as seen in step six. The admin would then complete the rest of the flow, and this is how an admin would create the policy for muting notifications. Next, let's look at a few important things to keep in mind when creating these policies. It is important to ensure that you have successfully integrated with Microsoft's Working Time API, that the policy is targeted to Microsoft Teams app for Android, that the policy is targeted to the intended user group during policy creation, that the users have an Intune license assigned to them, and that the users are using the latest company portal built on the Android device. As mentioned earlier, this feature is currently in private preview for Microsoft Teams app on Android only. Microsoft is targeting to GA this feature along with iOS support in Q1 of calendar year 2024. And with that, it's a wrap for this demo session. On behalf of myself, Jess and Matt, we would like to thank you so much for joining this session. We are committed to investing more in future efforts for frontline worker scenarios. We are extremely excited to have you try out the features that we demoed today, and we look forward to hearing more from you on how we can make the frontline worker experience on mobile devices better for you. Thank you.